Hey, it's Jim from Marine Marine, and today we are going to be talking first responder technology. This is actually going to be one of a series of short videos showing you some key features of our first responder system. So joining me here in the studio is Captain Tom Patassi. How are you, Tom? Good morning, Jim. How are we doing today? Not too bad. Um, so we're going to be talking about first responder systems, our Axiom Pro hardware, AIS 5000. Uh, so let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. All right. So first, let's talk about the hardware. Uh, we've got a couple of pieces here on the workbench. Uh, we have an Axiom Pro RBX 16. We also have an AIS 5000. So these devices combined are the core of our first responder system. Correct. So Tom, what are some of the things that, that happen when we link these two pieces together? So when you bring the Raymarine Axiom Pro and the AIS 5000 together, uh, it enables the capability for first responders to do uh, what's called blue force tracking or encrypted AIS. Um, so there is a, uh, a passphrase that comes out every month. It's an encryption code, a 32-bit encryption code that gets populated into our multifunction display, and that's where all the magic happens. The AIS is a, a special class A AIS that's you know made for the system, uh, but really once this is installed in the boat, you can kind of set it and forget it per se and all the interaction takes place through the multifunction display. That's cool. Now this system is something that we came up with for the US Coast Guard, but any responder agency can use this, correct? Correct, yep. So any first responder agency can uh, get this on the boat. Um, you get with your local Coast Guard, you get on the um, uh, monthly uh, email to get the passphrase and uh, you're good to go. Very good. So um, we are using an Axiom Pro here today and Axiom Pro is what we recommend for first responder systems. Um, though the features and the capabilities we're going to see here will work on any Axiom as long as it's combined with an AIS 5000. The reason we recommend this particular setup is because Axiom Pro is our hybrid touch product. So you have a full touchscreen uh, capability here. You also have some buttons and keys and a rotary knob and other stuff here out on the end of the display um, that are very, very handy, um, you know, especially in um, instances where you're going to be out in rough weather. Um, where the boat is going to be bouncing around, you need positive control. Um, so you have, you know, the simplicity of the touchscreen, um, but you do have all that tactile function of all the buttons and the keypad. Yeah, and um, here in the Northeast, guys wearing gloves, another great example of why yeah. those those buttons and the rotor knobs are great to have. Yeah, let's take a closer look at it. We're going to bring this up on our product camera. So let me click that over here. Bring the product camera into the stream. A little bit of a video earthquake for you guys watching. There we go. Let me see if I can get a better angle here of these two devices. Uh, so this is the AIS 5000. Um, this is a class A uh, transceiver. Um, it ties into the Axiom using NEMA 2000 uh, networking. So it's actually a very simple connection to make this work. And then here is the Axiom Pro over here. So of course you've got your giant touch screen. This is a 16 inch model that we're looking at, but these are available in nine or 12 inch units as well. Um, from the home screen here, you can see that we have an app-based uh, system, kind of similar to a smartphone or uh, you know, Apple or Android, in that you have your major tiles represent apps on the system. So you have chart, radar, sonar, that sort of thing. Um, out here on the end, I'm gonna shift the camera a little bit for you so you can see better. Um, we have our uh, keypad uh, controls. So you've actually got a home button that'll always get you back to this top screen, um, a menu button, uh, you have a back button. This is actually a user configurable button. You can uh, assign some shortcuts to this. Um, we can drop waypoints or trigger the man overboard alarm. Uh, this allows us to switch windows, uh, power key. This gives you access to the brightness control as well. And then there's also some autopilot controls. If your boat is equipped with an autopilot, you can do some shortcuts from there. The last thing I'll just point out on this Axiom Pro is behind this little square at the bottom. There's dual micro SD card slots, and those enable you to plug in your map uh, cartography uh, chips in there, whether they are Navionics or Lighthouse charts or whatever you have. So that kind of gives you an overview of the hardware itself. Um, and let's get in and we'll talk uh, a little bit about some of the features uh, that we've got here in the system. Um, so I think the first thing we want to show is how easy it is to customize it. Yeah. Um couple of, of different things on the customization. There's there's really two ways to do it. Um, the first is obviously we're going to show you how to do, to build and customize pages. And then the other thing we're going to talk about is, is how to um, create a profile um, that's for the vessel itself and that you can actually add 
uh, additional users to the profile. So yeah. um, let's say there's a fire department, there's four different groups. You can create a profile for each group, save your personal settings. Uh, this way, you know, you get to run at two o'clock in the morning. You don't have to be configuring the display. You just touch on your profile and, and you're good to go. But um, why don't we, uh, why don't you show them, Jim, how to, how to customize a page? Sure. Yeah. So these tiles that we have on the home screen, um, this is kind of how it sets up out of the box, but you can change these around and put whatever functions you want, wherever you would like them. Um, so if I want to change one of these tiles, let's, uh, let's change that uh, chart dashboard one all the way out on the end, Tom. Okay. Uh, uh, we'll just change yeah, that, that one. Instead. So what you're going to do is you're going to long press on it and you're going to get uh, a pop-up menu and select customize. And this brings us into our page editor. So up at the top there, that first button allows you to select your layout. Um, so this was previously a, uh, an app page with two apps on it, but let's go to something with three. Um, and now I pick from my apps over here on the edge of the screen. I just plug in whatever apps I want to see uh, into the windows. And you can see it automatically advances from panel to panel. So if you miss one and you want to change something out, you can certainly do that. Otherwise, go ahead and click Next. This allows you to give this new page you've created a name. Um, by default, it picks the names of the apps that you plugged into it. But if you wanted to customize the name, if this was something very particular to you and your name was John and you wanted to call this John's page, simply type it in and save it. And now you've got John's page on there. Um, once you do that, you, this app is ready to go. You simply touch it from the home screen to load it up. Now keep in mind, you can customize all of the apps, um, all of the pages on the system. Um, none of them are you know, locked down in any way. You can make them uh, do whatever you would like. Um, the first time you come into some of these apps, for example, um, in the Fish Finder, you might have to choose what channel you want to look at. And that's what we're seeing there uh, on that display. So the first time we use the Fish Finder app, oh, yeah, we're not connected up to live data because we're here in the studio. But this is where you would select what channel you want to look at, whether it's down vision or side vision or something like that. Um, our radar is in standby because we're in the studio. And the blue window represents our navigation chart. Uh, let's go back out to the home screen. So um, what we also want to show you are some of the real important settings related to the chart plotter. The chart plotter is really kind of the bread and butter capability of the system. You're going to use it probably more than anything else. So let's go ahead and open up the chart app. So we simply touch on it. The chart app is going to load up. And we're going to go into the menu. And the menu is always on the top right corner of the touch screen or the top right corner of the keyboard. Uh, either way, uh, opens up the menu. And we're going to go down to settings. And settings is represented by the gear icon. And the first tab we want to show you is this one called cartography. So we mentioned that you've got dual card slots on the front of this machine. You can plug in several different brands of maps into a Raymarine system. Uh, we are running Navionics on this system. Uh, you can also run Lighthouse charts. Uh, you might have CMAP charts. So depending on where you are, what charts are the popular or most accurate ones in your area, um, you do have some options. You can also run more than one brand of chart at the same time. So this allows you to pick what chart you want to see in this window that we are entering. Uh, and you can see the check marks next to Navionics. So that's uh, what we are running here. Um, so there are some other things that uh, can be customized in the chart. So let's take a look at the next tab over called Layers. Uh, Tom, can you tell me a little bit about this first setting for detail on the top? What do we do with? So the, the detail setting uh, allows you to uh, adjust how much data is actually shown on the chart. Low is going to strip out the majority of the data except for the uh, navigational aids, et cetera. And uh, high, conversely, is going to add in all possible data on the chart. And in some geographic locations, it, it can be a little bit overwhelming. There could just be you know, too much data sometimes. Uh, so depending upon where you are, what you're doing, you might want to you know, add or, or delete some of those layers uh, in order to see some of the other layers that you want to put on there. And um, in, in this next menu box, um, we're just going to kind of jump through and show you what are the really important ones that we feel uh, the first responder agencies should be doing. So the first one, Jim, I'm going to say is AIS, and we're going to turn that on. Yep. Yeah, AIS is your automatic identification system uh, contacts. So that can be other first responder vessels that are AIS equipped. That can also be commercial uh, vessels, small boats, ships, yachts. Even some recreational boats now carry AIS. So this is going to bring their icons into the chart display. Um, so you will want to have this on 
Uh, so you can see that traffic uh, around the boat. Yeah. Uh, the other uh, important one um, that's used quite often is the tide icons. Um, and basically you see as soon as I turn that on, there's a tide station uh, that popped up right here. Uh, obviously when you're, you're out there, important to know the stage of the tide, what it's doing. Uh, you know, again, in your in your geographic region, uh, you know, um, you might have a, a, a greater tide than we do here um, in the New York area. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's an average of a six foot tide out on the Cape. Those tides can be 10 and 12 feet. So, um, you know, knowing what stage of the tides you are very important. Yeah. The next thing on this tab we want to make sure you know about is that last setting called Easy View. Uh, and when you turn Easy View on, go ahead and click that for us you'll notice that it enlarges everything on the chart. So you're gonna get much larger spot soundings, much larger navigation icons, all the text is expanded. Um, I don't know about you guys out there, but I find as, uh, as I go up in years, I have a harder and harder time reading the stuff on the navigation chart. So I am a big fan of Easy View. I use it all the time on my own boats. Um, and I know a lot of you probably do as well. So that setting can be your best friend. Yeah. Don't be afraid to use it. So that's pretty much it in, in, in that you know, uh, layers menu. There are other things in there that you guys are, are welcome to play with, but these are the important ones. So we're going to slide over to the depth setting now. And uh, we're going to talk about the depth, the deep contour. Yeah, so deep uh, contour allows us to adjust the, um, the color, colorization of the chart. So as you're looking at this nautical chart right now, you can see that the vast majority of it is white. Uh, white on the chart is indicating uh, deep water. Um, and then we use different shades of blue. Um, basically, the darker the blue gets, the shallower the water uh, is getting. Um, so the setting that Tom has here now, he is going to adjust where it draws in sort of that intermediate shade of contour. So consider this maybe to be sort of like your warning zone before you get to shallow water. You know, right. you're good anywhere in the white. When you start getting into the light blue, be a little more cautious. And then you really have to be on your game when you get into the dark blue areas. So by adjusting that value there for deep contour, you can change where that shading is drawn in on the chart. Right. And one thing to mention here, guys, this is not a set it and forget it type of setting. Um, if you are executing a search in deeper water, um, you might want to highlight, you know, greater depths. And conversely, if you're in shallower water, you might want to, to knock that down a little bit. So it's something that you can um, readily change on the fly. Yep. It's very, very easy to get through through the uh, the settings menu there, and it's all on the Depths tab. Right. So we're going to go on to the View and Motion tab. Yeah, so View and Motion, this controls some different functions of the chart related to how it is oriented and where it places the boat on the chart. 99.999% um, of the time, the first setting here for Chart Motion uh, is probably going to be in Relative Motion. And in a Relative Motion display, basically your boat icon is going to be fixed on the screen, the map is going to move underneath it. Um, any AIS contacts or anything else on the chart is going to be moving in space around your boat icon. Um, the other option it has on here is something called true motion. You probably won't use it very, very much, except in circumstances where maybe boat position is very critical. Maybe you're trying to set up over a wreck or some other right. debris or something that you've marked on the chart. Um, you might go to true motion for that, but most of the time you're going to be in relative motion. Um, how about chart orientation? What do we do with that? Um, heads up seems to be the favorite for the majority of, uh, of folks out there, unless you're a real old time Loran guy. But uh, heads up obviously positions the chart. So what you're seeing in front of you is indeed in front of you. What you see on the port side is on the port side and starboard or starboard. Um, makes navigating very easily. Uh, just puts everything in perspective. When you're looking out the window and look at the chart, everything is where it's supposed to be. Yeah, and the other setting in here that you might use once in a while is north up mode. And you can see just by touching on it, I get my options. So I'm going to put this chart into north up. I'm going to actually zoom it out just a little bit so you can see sort of the bigger picture of the coastline here. So we're off the coast of Connecticut in this example. So north up mode is very useful if you are working your electronic chart display in conjunction with a paper chart or a map book. Um, or if you're, you know, super familiar with an area and you just know the lay of the land, you may want to see things in their proper perspective. So north up puts north at the top of the screen. Your boat icon will point in whatever direction the boat is headed, uh, independent of where north is. Um, the next thing uh, we can change in here is something called the boat position. Um, and it allows us basically to offset uh, the display um, and give us a little bit more visibility ahead or, um, well, ahead of the boat. 
Um, you're going to use this most of the time when you're in head up mode. So let's actually go ahead and put the orientation back in head up. And with boat position, you have a choice. You can be in the center of the scope or the center of the chart. You can have a partial offset where it pulls the boat down one third of the way or full offset. Uh, we're about three quarters of the way down the um, height of the screen. So the idea behind this is it gives you more look ahead. You can see farther out ahead of the boat and what's coming up. Um, you do sacrifice some of the visibility behind the boat. In most cases, that's usually not uh, an issue. Um, so you can kind of change this on the fly as you like. Um, and just knowing that it usually starts off in the center position, um, but you are free to adjust that. Right. All right, so and that's pretty much it under that tab. So we're gonna slide over to the advanced tab. Um, advanced tab, there's a, a lot of features that are pretty much um, set up default out of the box. I think there's two up in the top section here that are really worth talking about from a first responder standpoint of view. That's the enhanced AIS. Yeah, for sure. I'll let you explain those targets. Yeah, so with uh, AIS targets, when you initially turn them on, um, they all show up just as green triangles. Um, there's actually three sizes of triangles that are supposed to represent small vessels, medium vessels, and large vessels. It's something that they send as part of their AIS bro uh, broadcast is the length of the boat. Um, and the symbol just kind of scales uh, according to the data that it receives. Um, but everything looks the same. It's all basically green, uh, green triangle. Um, if we turn on enhanced targets, what we've actually done is we've created a bunch of different shapes of symbols in there. So a cargo ship, for example, has a kind of a defined shape. A passenger vessel has a defined shape. A sailboat has a defined shape. Uh, responder vessels, for other first responder vessels, have a defined shape. There's even a shape for search and rescue aircraft uh, that is unique. So it's just a way to provide a little bit more definition to what you're seeing right. uh, with the AIS contacts. Um, another thing they'll do when it's in enhanced mode as well is the, um, the symbols will scale according to their actual size. So if you start to zoom in and zoom in, zoom in on the chart, um, and there's a 500 foot freighter uh, on the chart, you'll actually see around the symbol uh, an outline of its overall length, and that is to scale on the chart. Uh, the next one we're going to look at in here is auto find ship, which you'll find right below it in the menu. This is a pretty neat feature. You want to talk a little bit about this? I think one of our agency partners re uh, requested this. They did. This actually came out of FDNY, so thank you, gentlemen, for that. Um, basically, what the, the find ship um, icon um, comes into play anytime that you're on a chart page and you, you basically move the chart off center, um, you are going to get an, a, a, an icon pop up that is the fine ship icon that's up in the left-hand corner there. If you press on the, the fine ship, it brings you back to center. But there may be times that you accidentally hit the, the, the touch screen. You got a lot of things going on. You're moving off the helm to do something. Um, you, you, you panned over to look at something and forgot to bring the chart back to where you are. And what the guys were telling us is that, you know, it, it created a little bit of a safety uh, conflict for them. So they requested something to be able to bring the chart back to center. So we gave them a, a little bit of a timer here. You can see there's a countdown timer underneath the find ship box. And after 15 seconds, if you have no interaction with the display, uh, the pop-up will come up to say, hey, look, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna go back to center. Yep, here it is right there. The pop -up. If you tap on it, it, it'll cancel. And if you do nothing, boom, it pops right back into center. Yeah. Um, nice feature to have. Some guys love it, some guys, don't care for it, but it's a it's it's in there um, for you to choose personal preference. As are a lot of these features, so just know that it's in there, and that's how you get to it. Yeah, it's a pretty cool feature. It is nice to have that automatic snap back bring you to center, so that yeah, yeah if you did if you did look away for a while and you you know you come back, it's just nice to know right. exactly where you are. Um, the last thing we're going to look at is back in the uh, menu again. So we're going to go to menu. We're going to go to settings. And we're going to look at a couple of things on the last tab called page settings. So depending on what type of a page you have constructed, you may have one or two options in here. Um, because the app we were just looking at, this chart app, is the only app on that page. It's a full screen of chart. We only have one option uh, to look at here, and that is our data overlays. So we know there are times when you might want to look at your chart, but at the same time, you need to keep an eye on the depth, or you need to know the latitude longitude of the boat. Or maybe you want to be able to take a screen capture and have certain critical information captured um, in that screenshot. That's what data overlays are for. So Tom's going to go ahead and hit the button here. And we are going to add a data overlay by touching the Add button. And let's add the boat's GPS position. 
So we're going to go to vessel position. And you can see what it's done is it's added this floating data box. And now with his finger, he can drag that anywhere on the display. Um, and if you tap it again, you'll get some options. So we can resize it. Obviously, this is very large, so we can make it a little bit smaller so it takes up less space. Again, we can pull it a little further down into the corner. And that looks like a good spot for it. Uh, let's go ahead and add the, uh, let's do course over ground. GPS, course over ground. There we go. And again, you can position it anywhere you want on the screen. So you just drag it into whatever position you like. If you want to change the size, just tap it again. And you'll get that option. If you decide you don't want it to, you want to delete it, you'll see the button right there on the bottom to delete it and remove it. One, you can have up to four of these data items. And these four items are unique to this chart page. Um, if you went on to a different page on the system, whether it's another chart or radar or sonar, you can have completely different data items on that page if you want. Right. And when you're happy with it, you just say done to save it. Right. And Jim, you alluded earlier to the fact that it's it's important to have some of these data overlays on there. Guys, when you're doing search patterns, um, having some of this important data over, overlay uh, is critical. Uh, you might want to put the time up there. You might want to put you know speed over ground, certainly the vessel position. Um, and as you're doing a search, you can actually drop a track behind you. Um, you can then take a screenshot, use your camera, take a picture of the, of the display. And when the officer gets back to quarters, you can actually um, use that data to attach to your report so that you can do a little CYA and say, hey, we were here, we did this search, and here's our information to show what we did. Yeah, that's pretty important. Um, one other thing we want to show you from that page settings uh, menu is how we can do a little bit of further customization on a page that shows more than one app at the same time. So we're going to actually open a different page on the system. This is the one that we customized earlier. Um, and uh, let's see here, just for fun, let's go into the menu. <clears throat> we're going to go down to settings again. And we're going to go into page settings. Let me bring this up full screen so you guys can all see it. So you notice now there's two options in here, and this is called split ratios. Um, so we have three apps on the screen right now, and I can change the way that they are split um, or the way that they occupy the space on the screen. So I can dedicate more space to one app and less space to the others. Um, I just basically hit the button, and then using that four-way uh, directional uh, arrow in the middle, I just pull the borders to where I want them to be, and that allows us to see um, the layout in our preferred uh, level of ratios. When you're happy with it, just hit the save button. I'm just going to hit cancel on that one to keep it back to yep. where it was. Where it was. That'll put it back all in the middle. So what's kind of cool about this is if you want to see a little more chart and a little less radar or vice versa, um, you can drag the proportions to whatever it is that you want to see. Yep. So I think that's about it for this video. We're going to have some more topics coming up for you in some additional segments. I want to thank you for watching our uh, Raymarine First Responder Series. So uh, tune in for more. Thanks. See you next time.